Robert De Palma, adjunct professor of geosciences, FAU, Florida. And we've got some very exciting news. I saw this uh, come out last week. I just caught the headline on one of my home pages. I clicked on it, and I read it and thought, this is one of the coolest stories I've come across in a while. has to do with uh, kind of understanding a little bit more about gr- ground zero with the asteroid that maybe extinct the dinosaurs and some things like that. So we brought on Robert De Palma with Florida Atlantic University and the University of Kansas to talk a little bit more about that. So I gave a very awful description, and I did that on purpose because I wanted you to be able to share the big news and kind of go go with that a little bit. I know I've asked about a half a dozen people, and they all said the same thing, like, oh, I saw that, but I haven't read it yet. <laughs> so anyway, that's where we're at with it. But what, to describe this uh, this big finding that you guys have discovered up there in North Dakota. So basically, this adds a, a slightly new dimension to uh, an issue or a, a story that has been out there for a while. I mean, we've known since the 80s that the asteroid came down, um, which we now know came down in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, and ultimately uh, caused ecological devastation and ended in uh, the third largest extinction on the planet. Um, that's all good long-term stuff, but uh, the details of what happened right after impact were not as well known, because the geologic record doesn't preserve things on that fine of a time scale of, you know, minutes to hours. We're talking in hundreds of years to thousands of years or millions of years, the geologic record. So the interesting part about this site is that we have evidence for a massive surge of water which inundated a Paleo River Valley, and essentially, within the period of a couple of hours, at maximum, uh, deposited a massive amount of dead animals, plants, and sediment, which essentially records the very first two hours after impact in the geologic equivalent of high-speed film. So we're able to see what happened in those moments after impact. Uh, The other interesting part about this is that based on the data that we have, uh, the most likely trigger for that surge of water were seismic waves from the impact site itself, because our data indicates that those seismic waves would have arrived at the site of deposition right around the same time as all of the incoming debris from the asteroid, which we found embedded in our deposits. So that's a very intriguing thing, that coupling between seismic shaking and this sort of thing. So we're talking about North Dakota's Hell Creek Formation as the place where the fossils and and that sort of thing ended up, correct? That's correct. Now, the point of impact is up in Canada, right? Uh, The point of impact is the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Oh, jeez. So that's that's about 3,000 kilometers to the south. Oh, my word. So that's that's way down south. So this is water from there, did you say? Or talk to me about how, how, no, how that impacted I, I got lost somewhere along the line yeah. there. You know, here's the interesting part about it. The thing that travels fast in this uh, scenario is uh, the, the coupling of the seismic waves. That is what is traveling fast. The seismic waves will arrive within minutes from the impact site, but the water is essentially already there. Whatever water is already in your study region If that body of water is of the right dimensions, then those size waves could excite that to uh, into a seiche formation, which is like a tsunami. It's like the bathtub water sloshing back and forth in one big wave. That's essentially what it does on a larger scale. So that would happen within minutes after impact. And by that extension, if those seismic waves encountered a body of water of the right dimensions almost anywhere from impact, on the other side of the world, for example, if that body of water was the right dimensions, it could have experienced the same thing within minutes after impact, before all the other bad things happened. So we're looking at the very first thing that could have affected all these little dotted ecologies right after impact. It's a phenomenal thing. We've got a snapshot into that moment in time. So two questions that pop into my head right away are, one... Is there animals that came from outside that Hell Creek formation in North Dakota? Like, was the wave so big that it, you know, brought ones up from Kansas? Well, technically speaking, um, because the inundation wave did appear to probably come from a marine environment, uh, we do have a number of marine organisms 
uh, that washed in there with everything else. And none of those marine organisms are from the Hell Creek Formation. They're from the seaway that used to be there. So all of those are anomalous and very interesting. And so that kind of thing, did he help dispel some some myths, or did that that type of information, did that help satisfy any questions of, you know, what's this troglobite doing here? This shouldn't be here. Did that, that anything right. like that happen? Uh, yeah, it also provides a sample of what was in the seaway at that time, because the interesting thing is, because of erosion and glaciation and such, um, there's no geologic record of the seaway from that time period. So literally, anything from the ocean that we have in this site is probably one of the best examples we've got of what existed in the seaway at the very end of the Cretaceous. Um, In addition, here's the cool part. Because we basically have high-resolution film, in geologic terms, of this moment in prehistory and how it would have affected uh, the animals and ecologies, um, that's a better way for us to understand in greater detail how that impact affected the world's creatures and what is out there. And by extension, that helps us to understand how our current world could possibly deal with uh, a a similar sort of disaster. So it really ties into modern day. Robert De Palma with Florida Atlantic University and the University of Kansas. We're talking about the big discovery, the fossilized remains of a mass of creatures that died minutes after a huge asteroid slammed into the Earth 66 million years ago, sealing the fate of the dinosaur, according to the, oh, I thought it was Associated Press, but it's the, it must be AFP, is that American Free Press? I'm not familiar with that, I guess. Um, Asking the wrong guy. Yeah, I mean, I'm, and I'm in the business, and I can't even keep up with the new with, with the new news sources that are out there. All I know is that TMZ seems to be leading all the time, so, um, but let's, let's stick with the serious stuff here for a second. Um one thing I was I think of when I when I hear tidal waves and I impact and I think of the movie Deep Impact or I think of the movie Perfect Storm and all I can think of is that water and how violent it must be. I mean, if you've spent any time in Kansas, you probably know that, you know, they say in a tornado, hay can stick into trees like nails and that sort of thing. Was there any evidence of, of violence when it comes to the uh, impact of the of the wave? I'm sure there was. Yes, yes absolutely. The, the wave was very, very violent. Uh, this surge of water essentially tumbled together and concentrated all of these carcasses, which are, uh, as a matter of fact, these are the first articulated carcasses of creatures associated with the KT boundary, the asteroid impact layer, uh, that we can demonstrate were killed as a direct result of it. So this is the first time you actually have a mass death layer there associated with the impact layer. Um, but when surge came in depositing all these things, as we excavate the creatures, we actually see with the fish, for example, uh, because there are many of those, we actually see some fish that have fins that penetrate right through the bodies of other fish, and some are actually ripped apart when they were wrapped around the tree logs that are in the deposit. So it was absolutely violent. And mammals. You mentioned, I think, mammals earlier, or I thought I saw that in the article I read. Uh, what type of mammals were scooped up? Yeah. Well, we do have evidence of mammals there. Um, the one that we're investigating right now is, is still under study, and we're about to uh, you know, do final touches on a manuscript on that, so I can't comment too much further on. But uh, the mammals that existed back then are, um, are very important to the, the story of humanity in that this is essentially what our representative was back then in the time of the dinosaurs. So anything that we have today, mammalian on Earth, comes from a lineage that survived that whole event, which is absolutely fascinating. And we want to know why those certain lineages did survive that event. So this is actually an important piece to that. So if we were to say one thing that you believe that mankind as a whole is supposed to extrapolate from this study and incorporate it into our lives in whichever way we can, what, what would that be? Um, a further understanding of how an event like this could have a, a cataclysmic effect on the world and its ecologies, and to extend that to today uh, to in, in an effort to be better stewards of the current ecologies, to know how vulnerable they could possibly be, and to find out ways of, uh, of doing that, of caring for them. That's really what should be one of the take-home messages. And what, what did you find to be the most fascinating that 
you know, that you wish people would really know more that come out of this or maybe something in all your years, you're like, wow, that was really cool or that was really neat. Just kind of from your perspective, what did you find that, you know, you're, you're the one who does it day to day, so you're kind of the expert in this. So what, what was the thing that really stood out to you the most? Uh, illumination. Um, basically, you know, since I was a child, I've thought about what the Cretaceous was like, and this is the closest thing you're going to get to a snapshot of that world, uh, of whatever was there at those moments right after impact. So overall, the whole snapshot that we've got is fascinating to me, and that's what really captivates me. It brings you right in there. You've got a front row seat to one of the most cataclysmic events in, uh, in the history of life on Earth, which is very interesting. It's one of the top three extinctions that ever occurred. So it's the one moment you really want to see. Wrapping up the interview here, Robert De Palma with Florida Atlantic University and the University of Kansas. Uh, just kind of final thoughts, just uh, what's next with, with the study or with yourself? I think you mentioned something about a mammal, but just kind of, uh, just kind of you know, bring us forward now. We'll kind of wrap up and bring us forward with what to expect next and what's going on. Well, we're at the most important and most exciting part of the uh, study right now because the first paper is coming out, and we have multiple other ones that are on the way out that we are working on, and this is going to be an ongoing uh, research effort. Uh, we've had other researchers there from other universities, other uh, institutions not related to our research team over past years. They're going to continue coming out with new people, do their own studies. Uh, we're going to do our own, and it's going to be a massive research effort to put this entire story together, all the details and gaps that we still don't know. We're going to be filling those as much as possible, and we're going to be bringing in uh, our, our very talented uh, co-ed field assistant team, which has been wonderful over all these years, and they're going to keep honing their skills because they've been fabulous through this whole process. So it's a win-win for everybody, and we're really just looking forward to it.